Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a mono-black rat tribal deck featuring the Rat King as our commander, a 3-3 legendary rat with Toxic 1 saying all the rats we control have Toxic 1. Not super relevant since we're very rarely gonna poison the opponent to death. Instead, when our Rat King enters the battlefield, we get to take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, then reveal any number of rat cards from among them and put those into our hand, and the rest goes on the bottom. So Rat King rewards us for playing a ton of rats, as it can provide a lot of card advantage when it enters the battlefield. And our deck has quite a few rats, not a wide variety, but we have 40 copies of a Rat Colony, one of the few cards in Magic you can play as many copies of as you want, including in Historic Brawl. So we've got 40 copies, the 2 mana 2 one gets plus one plus so for each other rat we control. So the more rat colonies we have, the scarier they get, and with our rat king we're quite likely to find a bunch of them in the top five of our library. And then we've got a few additional rats to kind of round them out. Pack rat has power toughness equal to the number of rats we control, so that gives us a bit more toughness as opposed to rat colony. And for two and a black we can discard any card from our hand to create a token that's a copy of pack rat, so that's a way to maybe discard excess lands in the late game and still turn them into useful rats. And then Maronar also used to be a commander in this deck before the Rat King got introduced. I do like both as potential options, but now we're playing Maronar in the 99, a 5-mana 2-3, saying all rats have fear, so they cannot be blocked except by artifacts and other black creatures, which can be great in certain matchups as a way to give our entire team evasion. And then we can also tap Maronar, sacrifice rats to create X-1-1 black rat creature tokens, where X is the number of rats we control, so that can also exponentially grow the number of rats we control, which is quite powerful. Now there are some additional rat synergies we could be playing, like Piper of the Swarm, making rat tokens and sacrificing rats to steal an opposing creature. There's Ogre Slumlord to give our rats death touch and generate additional 1-1 rat tokens. The reason I'm not playing those is because they don't have the rat subtype, so we won't be able to reveal them to our rat king, and that's usually the way we draw a lot of cards in this deck is with our commander, so not having the rat type is a pretty huge drawback, so that's why I excluded those. Now a very important type of card in this deck is a ways to discount the mana cost of our creatures. That way we can much more easily deploy our hand of all rat colonies after finding them with our rat king. So we've got the Bontus Monument, making black creatures cost one less to cast, and whenever we cast a creature spell, each opponent loses one and we gain one life. Definitely one of the more exciting cost reducers. There's Cloud Key, naming creature. Most of the time, every now and then, we might name a different card type like Artifact, but by naming creature, we discount all our creatures by one. Then there's Herald's Horn, naming Rat, which will discount all our rats, and we can also reveal the top card of our library in our upkeep, and if it's a rat, we can put it into our hands, so it can also be a nice source of card advantage. Semblance Anvil can discount our rats by two, but uh, we do need to exile a rat from our hand in order to cast it. And then there's Immortal Sun, which will also discount all our spells by one, but of course costs six mana to get in play, also gives our team plus one plus one to get our team above one toughness, which can also be important in certain matchups where the opponent can make one one tokens. And then we also get to draw an additional card each turn, so of course does a lot more than simply giving our rats a one mana discount, also shuts down all planeswalkers, and we don't have any of those in our deck. So all of these cost reducers are quite important, and we don't have to be afraid to aggressively mulligan in this deck, since it's just important that we have a few lands, hopefully a cost reducer or some other ramp, and then our Rat King will make sure we find additional Rat Colonies, so we don't actually need a ton of Rat Colonies in our hand for our deck to function. So again, don't be afraid to mulligan aggressively. Then we've got a bunch of regular ramp artifacts, just to speed things up, make sure we build up our mana to make it easier to play Rat King and a bunch of rats afterwards, and then sometimes we also need a ramp to get to 6 mana to play Mortal Sun or Caged Sun, which is another way of producing a lot of extra mana. Naming black will give our black creatures plus one plus one, and whenever we tap a black land for mana, it will generate an additional mana, so essentially doubles up our mana. So getting to 6 mana in the first place can be a bit challenging, but once we do get the Caged Sun down, it becomes trivial to play Rat King and empty your hand of Rat Colonies, even after replaying our Rat King a few times. And then we also have some cheaper ramp artifacts, including Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. Typically don't mind waiting on some of these until turn 3. 
That way we can play turn 2 Rand Colony, turn 3 either play Arcane Signet or Mindstone, and then we can still play a 2-mana Rand Colony afterwards and be mana efficient. Doesn't work the same way with Guardian Idol and Cold Steel Hearts since they come into play tapped, but they can still be very useful in potentially setting up one of our 4-mana ramp artifacts, like Hedron Archive or Keytooth Archive, which will generate 2 additional mana, so that can also get us to 6 on the following turn for Cage Sun or Immortal Sun. And then we've got a bit of Hand Disruption as well, Duress and Thoughtseize, mainly to take away opposing Sweeper effects, which can be quite effective if we're deploying a lot of our creatures. And then besides our Rats, we have a bit of card advantage as well, with the Black Market Connections, which can make a Treasure Token, draw a card, and even make a Shapeshifter each turn if we wanted to, but it will cost us some life. The Shapeshifter also has great synergy with Rat Colony, as it's a Changeling, so it does have the Rat creature type as well. Then there's Phyrexian Arena, to just draw at the cost of one life each turn, Faceless Agent is a shapeshifter changeling, so also counts as a rat and will find another rat, most likely a rat colony. And then the Effigy is one of my favorite cards in this deck, a 1-4 Defender, since we can take a look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells from the top of our library, and whenever we cast a creature spell this way, it will become a black bird in addition to its other colors and types, has flying, and has base, power, and toughness 1-1. Now a base power and toughness 1-1 one, one rat colony still gets plus 1 plus 0 for each author rat we control, so it will still increase with the number of rat colonies we have in play, and now it also has flying, so it has a bit of built in evasion which can be very useful in closing out the game. And then we also have Vanquisher's Banner as another source of card advantage, giving our rats plus 1 plus 1, and whenever we cast one we get to draw a card, so it can also be great in addition with the additional mana ramp or mana discounts. And then we've got a few additional cards to round out the deck. Echoing Return, also perfect here, can return target creature and all other cards with the same name as that card from our graveyard to our hand. So in the late game, if we have 10 or more rat colonies in the graveyard, we can get them all back into our hand in one turn, and especially paired with some mana acceleration or mana discount, we'll be able to replay all those rats very quickly. And then Metallic Mimic, another shapeshifter, will enter as a rat. Can't find it with our Rat King, unfortunately, since it doesn't have the changeling ability like some of our other creatures. But then once it names Rat, all other rats will enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. And then a Crippling Fear can also be a nice one-sided sweeper, naming Rat, giving all non-rat creatures minus three minus three until end of turn. And then our mana base has a few more utility lands, including Cabal Strongholds, which can generate additional mana as soon as we have five or more swamps in play, since we'll be able to tap it alongside three other lands to generate five mana, and the more swamps the better. And then a castle can be another source of card advantage. We've got 31 snow-covered swamps, because we're also playing Faceless Haven, which needs snow mana to activate. Turns into a 4-3 creature with Vigilance and all creature types, so also counts as a rat to maybe pump up all our rat colonies. And Mutavolt, another creature land with all creature types, turns into a 2-2 for just one mana, so we can replicate the classic Mutavolt alongside Pack Rat, which used to dominate standard. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Omnath. Can be a pretty scary elemental deck. We've got a Black Market Connections, so that's going to be a little bit painful to get going, but that does provide a steady stream of treasures and card draw, even shapeshifters if we're feeling brave. So, yeah, somewhat questionable hand, but I'm going to try it out. Scorch better trades for right. Key was a nice draw. So connections make a treasure, guarantees key on the following turn. And a Phyrexian Arena. Alright, drawing both of our enchantments that cost life may not work out, but uh, start with connections and then take it slow, just make some treasures. I think I take the trade since. It's gonna happen at some point. Opponent stays back. And a counterpart to copy a uh, Scorch Spitter. That's fine. Now I could go Signet plus Rats, which is maybe better. And then next turn, Key. And there's Omnath. Can take out a Rats. And we'll trade. What do we like here? Demonic Tutor? Sounds good. 
And then probably get rid of Fraxen Arena. Although now that we have a lot of mana, maybe Connections is not quite as good. Since we don't mind a bit of card draw, it's just card draw at the cost of 2 life is a bit more painful. And then Tutor could find all sorts of goodies. Maybe a way to discount our ranks even more. But we are under significant pressure now. So what do we tutor for? Immortal Sun seems a bit slow. Could go for Vanquisher's Banner. Crippling Fear does not kill a 4-4 Omnath right now. Pontus Monuments, potentially a way to gain some life back, as opposed to a Herald's Horn. So this turn I could still go Monuments, double rats, and then try and leverage Arena and our Rat King. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So big turn coming up for our opponents. At least five mana. They could flash back Croaking Counterpart at the very least. And they're gonna make another Omnath. It is legendary, but can still deal a bunch of damage here. Killing a rat colony. Now do we trade for Score Spitter? Yeah, I think I should. Alright, so strongholds. Does not yet generate additional mana here, but may as well. Ooh, only the one rat colony? That's painful. At least we've got our Frex and Arena for a bit of card draw. And we're happy to trade Rat King to be able to replay it. Masked Vandal blows up Frex and Arena. There goes my card draw. So hopefully we get a chance to trade. Fading Hope to bounce Rat Colony. Can still trade Rat King for Crasher. And a Brush Fire. Okay, happy to take this trade. More at six. So play our Rat King. And this time we found some more goodies, including a pack rat. So that gives us a bit more toughness to work with. Monuments doing work. Okay. 5-5 five, five pack rat back on defense. 11 life. Cavalier of Thorns the play. Can find a land to help Omnath as well. But they may not have any great attacks now. And we found another a rat colony. Could also just make two copies of Pack Rat at this point, even though it doesn't drain with monuments, that may be better. And then do we attack with everyone or just a Pack Rat? Probably just Pack Rat. Okay, that's essentially a chum block. Maybe they want to get something back from their graveyard here. Goes for Fertilid. Pretty good with Omnath. Alright, we'll pass and then we can activate Pack Rat at instant speed. There's Fertilid. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Pack Rat's gonna take over. Close one against Elementals, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Brokos, Sultai, Mutate. Our hand leaves a bit to be desired. Thoughtseize is nice, but no acceleration, no mana discounts. This is better. Signet ramps into Banner, maybe on turn 4. So we get a bit of card draw. So the sequencing might be turn 2 Rat Colony and then turn 3 Signet plus Rat Colony. 
So we make use of the mana or signet generates right away. Since banner's at 5 mana and not 4. A rat colony down. There's gonna be more, don't worry. Skid Swarm, that's pretty good against us, making a bunch of tokens. So not pleased about that one. At least the banner can pump up alright, so if that sticks around, they won't trade for 1-1 one, one insects. But once our opponent starts doubling Skewed Swarms, it's going to be pretty hard. Opponents digging up whatever they want. Just going to play banner and hope it doesn't get removed. Herald's Horn, also excellent. Still banner, and then next turn we can horn into a bunch of rats, and then we don't really mind a sweeper as much. Could even attempt to attack for three. And if our opponent mutates onto Skewed Swarm and then starts making copies, they can actually make copies of the 6-6, six -six, although we'll see how that works out. Yeah, I guess they don't want to mutate the Legendary on top, since then they won't be able to keep the copies. So it's going to get pretty complicated in a second. For now, play Horn, tapping this for colorless mana first. Name Rats. And then we could Rat King plus Colony. Or we might draw into another Colony with Banner. Okay, Maronar could come in handy to attack past the 1-1s. One Although our opponent's going to start making copies of Harvester soon. Binding is unfortunate. Takes out our banner. Still have Horn at least, revealing a rat colony. So, Stronghold is close to generating more mana next turn. For now, could play Maronar, Rat King, and Rat Colony. Looks okay. And then I'll have enough rats for Rat Colony to attack with Fear and at least offer the trade for Harvester. Which works for me. Not a bad haul. Okay. Rats have Fear, so the tokens can block. Opponent falls to 10. And yeah, Marinar, if it gets a chance to activate, can also make an army of 1-1 one -one rats. Okay, there's a copy of Skewed Swarm, now a 4-6 Harvester. Heron mutated to draw. And that's gonna trigger Harvester as well. Make me sacrifice a creature. Rat King can go. And we'll see if we still have enough. Although now our opponent's making copies of 4-6 Harvesters, which are black, so that gets around fear. So my best chance is just to go wide, activate Maronar, and uh, take it from there. So I can activate Stronghold now. Five mana. Well, our plan is simple. And then I guess we can still play a Rat King as well. Find four more rats. Can offer the trade here for the harvesters, which is probably a good idea. So these can all attack. And then before damage, sacrifice Rat King to make a bunch more tokens. Opponent with a Sinister Reflections, conjuring a duplicate. So at least we're limiting how many Skewed Swarms they have in play. So now it's Rat Tokens from Marinar versus Skewed Swarm, and I'm not sure who's gonna win. We've got early lead, but you never know with Skewed Swarm. Can get out of hand very quickly. Starix mutated. Alright, let's see what they hit. 
run, that's okay. And a couple lanes. Sacrifice a right token. And as the board sits, we could present lethal. Another lands means a bunch more harvesters. And a heron. Okay, that's another bunch of Sterix triggers. So not looking forward to those. Trumpeting Nar, Uro means another land. And a bunch more Scute Swarm triggers. And yeah, that's uh, not looking great for us. Sacrifice a rat. And a Season of Growth. So our opponent has 18 blockers. Yeah, just gonna play as many rats as possible. And then uh, make them trade, essentially. Just a one rat this time. And then attack with everyone, but I'm pretty sure we're dead to all the flyers next turn. If they didn't have flying, there's a chance it could stay back, make enough rats and survive. But I think our opponent's got us covered. Yeah, Scute Swarm plus Mutate is a scary combo, especially once Sterix gets involved. So maybe that's what they searched up. Can sacrifice our Rat King. Make a bunch more rats, but it doesn't matter how much power Rat Colony has. 37. They don't trample. And yeah, Harvester being a black creature to get around fear. Also a key element here. Alright, GG's. Bones got 40 power in the air, but it was an interesting game for sure. Whisper. Opponent gets a bunch more mutate triggers. Season of Growth also goes off. So it doesn't get much better for the Soul Time mutate deck. I would not recommend playing this in paper. Gets kind of complicated pretty quickly. All right, the season of growth triggers are not my favorite. So I think I'm gonna throw in the towel here to save everyone some time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing an equipment deck, and we've got a Keeper, Bontus Monument, one of our better cost reducers. So if that can stick around, we'll be able to quickly empty our hand. Outfitter can be scary, especially if our opponent has some of the more expensive equipments in hand. Like the Colossus Hammer, they could technically attack us for 12 here. Just an attack for two. Right, Foundry Beetle has first strike, so it's pretty good against our rants. We'll just have to go wide enough to kill them in one attack. Beetle and Outfitter attack. Trading for Outfitter is not unreasonable. So I'll play Monuments, and then next turn I could quadruple Rat Colony. So yeah, maybe should have traded for Outfitter when I had the chance. There was a consideration for playing a Rat Colony last turn to have a couple 3-1s to trade for Akiri, but they can always use the ability to make Indestructible if they have a cheap enough equipment, so... Shadow Spear for Trample, and a Living Weapon equipment here that they can now equip for 1 mana, giving Vigilance and lifelink in addition to plus one plus one. Yeah, let's just trade here. Our turn is going to be pretty simple. 
play right. Drain for one. Play around, drain for one. Play around, drain for one. And you guessed it, play around, drain for one. So we've got a couple five ones in play now. And next turn we can increase their power even more with a rat king. At least two more rat colonies. Okay, a new for Meridon equipment here. Plus two, plus two. When it dies, they get to draft from the spellbook. So do we want to trade here? Not really. If I don't trade, I get to attack back for a bit more damage. So even though they gain one life twice, I think I'm still better off not taking the trade. And they can move an equipment, potentially. Okay, time for Rat King. And find four more rats. Crippling Fear would have been decent on this board, too. So we'll get up to nine power here. At least two will go through, and that will leave our opponents at one life, thanks to the lifelink. Assuming no more interaction. Okay. We'll see if they can recover. Not sure what the spellbook includes, I doubt there's any sweepers. Some nice old school cards. Alrighty. At 16. Feeling relatively safe. A nettle cyst can get pretty large, and they got a two mana discount from the foundry beetle. So they can move it. Onto the first striker and then give it lifelink and vigilance. Okay, that's definitely way back in the game here. Don't have a profitable block. So, opponent's gonna gain eight and then eight more on defense. So, that might have done it. Do I jump with a rat king is a question. I think I should still keep as many rats in play as possible. Can play two more rat colonies. So the discount from the beetle allowing all these plays and then the discount from outfitter as well allowing them to move the batter bone for one mana so all right opponent still explodes how does the math work out here play two more rat colonies they go up to nine power each attack all out opponent's got two blockers and then after gaining eight and killing a rat which shrinks down our team in first strike we would still have three uh, rat colony is getting in for 8 damage each. So 16, 24. So yeah, I guess we're still presenting lethal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Azuri. So proliferate the deck. Turn to Cold Steel Hearts, nice, with an arena for card advantage. So I don't think I can turn it down. And then Blue Green's not really known for having a ton of removal. So a rat colony is going to be a real threat. Incubation Root could be a powerful start. Gonna play Cold Steel Heart and then maybe next turn still go double Rat Colony. And wait on playing Phyrexian Arena. Opponent ramping nicely. So not gonna see Azuri quite yet. Opponent could maybe adapt Incubation Druids, make it into a 3-5. Playing out Soaring City implies that they don't have a ton of other lands in hand. So for now just Incubation Druids into a Gauntlet. Fair enough. Metallic Mimic, a decent pickup. So 
could go mimic into rat colony now to be mana efficient and wait on arena until we can play it alongside another rat colony hit for 10 and then now it's time for azuri to maybe proliferate and draw some cards it's gonna be a tamio can keep one of our creatures tapped down Adds a counter to the Midnight Clocks, their opponent racing towards 12 counters to refresh their hand. The the so Taimyo keeps Colony tap down. Our will cannot be denied. Hoping we can at least take out Taimyo here. Okay, just gonna keep playing Rat Colonies. For as long as we don't hit an extra land. And then both rats at Taimyo. Could also go face, but let's just play it safe. Since they could potentially ultimate a time your next turn, thanks to the gauntlets and Azuri. Time you down, opponent keeps incubation druid. And we're presenting a pretty scary board. So unless they top deck a reverse rebuke, we might be okay. Time warp to take an extra turn makes sense. But unless they can add another permanent to the board, it's not the end of the world. Right, Canopy, Kill, Mimic, Proliferate. So Midnight Clock is getting close to 12 counters. Opponent still needs to answer our rants. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, too many rat colonies for them to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Moldrotha, the Gravetide, so Sultai Graveyard deck. This hand's probably not going to cut it without more ramp to get to Caged Sun, as much as I like Effigy. This is not much better. Still missing ramp. Thoughtseize is nice, but only buys us so much time. Okay, Cloud Key is better. And then one Rat Colony can go. So now we desperately need a third land. And then Mimic on Rats, turn 3 Cloud Key, play a couple Rats. Maronar could also come in handy, although our opponent is going to have some black creatures that can block despite fear. Turn 2 Florahedron for ramp, and there's our land, perfect. Cloud Key on a creature, pass it back. Can be a tapped Hagra Mauling. So three mana left. And a Wolf Hollow Haven. Okay. So they're getting closer to Moldrotha. For now, triple rat colony looks good. And then maybe next turn, give them all fear if we draw lands for a uh, Maronar. Could offer the trade now to delay Moldrotha, but I think we're fine with them tapping out for their commander. Can eventually get back hideouts. And at the very least we can play our commander, find another rat colony. Okay, Binding may go after Cloud Key, may take out Mimic. Kind of prefer them taking out Mimic. Okay. So land for Marinar is still looking quite nice. And Rat King into another Rat Colony. Not a bad backup plan. Okay. Play them before attacking to grow Rat Colony. And attack for a healthy 21 damage. Opponent jumps. There may be a trick here. Status to give death touch. Fair enough. Opponent is still falling to 12. And playing Moldrotha is not going to be good enough here. In the event of a sweeper we can at least rebuild pretty quickly with triple rat colony. 
So yeah, the Cloud Key was definitely the key to this game. Vraska can kill a 6-2 Rat Colony and still die on the way back. So don't be afraid to mulligan, since the cost reduction can make a world of difference. Okay, and even found the land to play Marinar now, which will also do it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hands got all the nifty tools we kind of need. Although, they don't have the best synergy necessarily. Maybe Cloud Key names artifacts to get these in place sooner. Yeah, I could see that working out better than naming Creature. Still need a couple of lands. Ivy always a scary deck to face. So we'll need all the help we can get. Turn to Cold Steel Hearts. And a Symbiote's early mutate target. So if I play Cloud Key on Artifacts, I'll be able to at least play Banner. Yeah, I think that's fine. And then ramp out a Cage Sun as soon as possible, which can also make more mana. And then we might draw into another cost reducer later to name creature. Alright, so do we like a caged sun now? I think so. Developer mana as soon as possible. And then next turn, banner plus a bunch of rants to draw. Point even with a street artist to copy their copies. Alright, so we'll see them target their creatures now. Great Horn for Ramp's a good one. Although not enough mana to activate Errant. But next turn they might. So both decks off to a good start. Taking 8. Okay, let's play banner and then hope to string together some more lands potentially. Immortal Sun gets a discount from Key and will discount her lands down to one mana. Kodama trampling their creatures. And a Curiosity also doubled by Ivy. His opponent gets to get a nice attack in here. Can double block the 4-5 Great Horn so they don't trample over. So they're just going to send an Ivy. Nope, still attacking with a other creature here. I think we double block. They might have another pump spell or slip out the back. Fair enough. So they still trample over, but we get to keep one rat. So this uh, next turn is going to be important. Opponent gets to draw a bunch of cards. They've got a lot of mana from those great horns. So kick things off with Immortal Sun. And then play some rats. Can still play our Rant King to refuel. But for now we might draw into some more relevant interaction. Alright. So, can attack with my 11 powered Rat Colony. And then we can block the Tramplers pretty easily now. It's the flying creatures that are more of a concern. So we'll see if we're dead. Ooh, Sterix. Yeah. That's a good one. Copy with Errant as well. So they get a bunch of Sterix triggers alongside the Great Horn. 
And we'll see what they put in play. For now, a bunch of lands and a slither blade. Not the worst. Problem is that they're also getting the plus one counters here from uh, the symbiotes. So they might be able to present a 10 powered flyer here to just kill us on the spot. And yeah, there it is, a third counter is 10 power, so that's exactly enough. And we were so close to taking over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tovalar, red-green werewolves. My hand's got one land in it, so it's gonna be a mulligan. This isn't great either, but hopefully we'll find a way to discount our rants, or a way to ramp into Cage Sun. And then Cage Sun can help out. So I'll try this. And then at least our rants can maybe trade for werewolves, so the opponent doesn't get to draw. Cold Steel Heart for ramp. And a duress can have a look, maybe take away a removal spell. Okay, Guardian Project for card draw. Lurking Predators could be effective too. And then the Bird Admirer, which can potentially trade off for some rat colonies. So Guardian Project, if the game goes long, might be the most problematic card. Since that can uh, provide a lot of extra cards. And then next turn we'll still be able to attack into a Bird Admirer, once we play another Rat. Okay, we're hitting our land drops at least. So could already play the Rat King, which will still pump up our Rat Colonies. Just to be a bit more mana efficient. And then we can still block a Bird Admirer if they play Tovalar. Even if they Tovalar plus Rabbit Bites. I guess they could Rabbit Bite with Tovalar itself. But it's a tap land. So they're just gonna take out a Rat Colony instead. That's fine. Horn is nice. Play double colony. And this one can attack. Opponent trades. Could have sent both, but wouldn't mind keeping something on defense to make sure the opponent's wolves don't get out of hand. Harlan makes a wolf token. And yeah, we can play our Cage Sun, which will also pump up our rats, or we can just play two more. And then, either way, we're guaranteed to take out Arlen, so I guess we prefer having more rats on defense. And then I can potentially activate the castle as well. Just send everyone at Arlen, kind of hoping they trade for the Rat King. So we can eventually replay it. So now I might be more in favor of playing a Caged Sun, since they don't have a wolf to hit me back with Tovalar and draw. And then we'll essentially have 12 mana to easily replay a Rat King and a bunch of colonies. So yeah, play a Rat King. Finding a bunch more. Perfect. Lurking predators might find a few creatures, but that's okay. It's all about to rat colony life. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, we're just gonna have lethal in play here. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, facing a Drizzt deck. Sadly, only one land here, so wouldn't be able to keep. Anvil could have been exciting. No ramp, just banner. I don't think that's gonna cut it. Now a Caged Sun. So we're getting pretty low here. Now we did find an Anvil and a Connections. Okay, we'll keep. And then I'm tempted to just bottom the Rants. Keep three lands, keep Connections alongside Anvil, and then hope that our Rant King can refuel. We'll need to find a Rant to imprint with Anvil. But Connections can also help generate mana and draw cards. Opponent can potentially make a double striking Drizzt and double strike and first strike, both very good against our Rants. So that could be an issue. Opponent also took a few mulligans. So at least we're not too far behind. And then I'm most likely pulling connections on three. So we're pointed off to a pretty slow start at least. Hoping they don't have answers to artifacts and enchantments. And we have to be careful not to spend too much life on the connections. But at least early on, definitely interested in making treasure and drawing. Okay, Trail Sarah, so there's some life gain synergy. And yeah, treasure and draw. Don't think I'm making a shapeshifter just yet. Found a rat colony. So, if I play Anvil, Exiling Colony, I can still play Rat King. And then hopefully find more rats. Not bad, so we can play all of those next turn. And our opponent's still a turn away from playing their commander. Possible I don't need to make a treasure anymore, since we have our anvil now. Although we could still draw into some of our six mana artifacts, in which case the treasure could be helpful. Okay, war leader, that's a scary one, if it gets to attack. So we definitely want to get on the board. And now that we drew effigy, I actually don't mind treasure and draw. Okay, so I'll start by playing Effigy, see what's on top, in case we can play some more ranks for free. It's gonna be Cold Steel Heart and next. So we know that's incoming. And time to play our rat colonies. And now with Effigy, we can actually potentially fly over Drizzt. So that was one of our better cards. Got our blockers to hold off War Leader, hopefully. And then it's just a matter of time until we find some rat colonies on the top of our deck. Now I can definitely stop making treasure. Just go for the card draw. Okay, Binding Grace to gain life or get one drops back. Can enable Moon Dancer to scry and pick up a plus one counter. War Leader is attacking. And I'll just single block. Block here. Do I want to put Effigy in harm's way? Don't think our opponent's playing Giant Growth necessarily, so sure. Alright, safekeeping, that's fine. So opponent will gain some life and grow Moon Dancer. But we get to keep our Effigy, which is what matters. So we'll get to see the top card before having to decide what to do with connections, which is useful too. And there's a rat on top, so there's no point in me drawing, is there? So, at that point, could just make a shapeshifter or could make a treasure anyway. Since it's not a May ability. Play rats, which will turn into a flyer, but still has 5 power here. And we found a pack rat as well, that's excellent. So we're going off. Give me those flying rats. And then we can still leverage pack rats. And, uh, sure, I guess we'll uh, just play a land out and then activate Packrat once. 
And do we want to attack? Sure, why not? So those trade, and before damage I might as well discard to make another pack rat to grow the rat colonies. Bones at 12. And hopefully there's no board wipe so we can take over with our flying rats. Seeing some quirky rules interactions here, pack rats only a 1-1 because of the effigy, but rat colony still getting the plus one plus oh bonus despite being a base 1-1. So if opponent plays Drizzt, that's not going to cut it. And then we should be able to cross the finish line next turn. Okay. So yeah, Mulliganing paid off. Connections and Anvil alongside Effigy, a great combo. And now Maronar can also give our team fear for what it's worth. And smash. Awesome. So yeah, glad we got to see our effigy in action. Great synergy with Rat Colony. I've been uh, waiting to try this combo for a while. So yeah, overall this mono black, mono rat deck you could say is pretty good. Just gotta make sure you mulligan aggressively to find one of your mana reducers or some ramp so you don't simply play one rat a turn since that's probably not gonna cut it in most historic brawl games. But uh, once you get those engines online the deck can be incredibly impressive. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.